morning. How's everybody doing today? We finished our daily reading for this morning. God bless everybody who is here. Today's all Patreon day, so if you guys are not normally here, praise God, then welcome. It's my gift to everybody. Make sure everybody has an updated report about at least my take on the markets. Now, everything in this video is never financial investment or trading advice of any kind. Everything is just for entertainment, educational, and comedic purposes only. Bear in mind, I eat red crayons for breakfast. Trading in the markets carries substantial risk. Never trade more than you can afford to lose. And especially be aware against high leverage trading. Our website, patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven. If you're watching us from somewhere online, I want you to... Uh, know that you can come to our lessons page and find find us our lessons page our tutorials are primarily on wednesday and we go over our lessons and we talk about uh, various things uh, the last lesson that we have was uh, about volume spread analysis number one we're going to be going under the volume spread analysis number two coming up our website's at the top patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven and it's always found in the description we meet uh, four times a week uh, one day for word room and three dives uh, three days for dive uh, Mondays, Wednesdays for tutorials, and 9 a.m., uh, which is today. But the first Saturday of every month is always Patreon, all Patreon Saturday. Here we're going to be looking at Brett on using our Trading View software that we use. We're going to pull it up on Gate.io. It's our previous map. Okay, let's go to our daily chart. The last price had some health, <laughs> broke above from this downtrend, had some health by breaking above, sitting and on our sword cut nicely. We saw this. After extracting our mid-phantom, it was placed at the last largest energy center on top, on the outer extremities, just as in Tiger analysis. So this area is going to reveal some health for us. We can see that price is a new sword cut, so we drew that sword cut. Sword cuts reveal mixed phantom target here. It helped us reveal the next health, which was along this track. I actually think we were using the 12-hour for Brett, now that I come to think about it. Mixed phantom reveals hidden sword cuts because of the oscillation of price in this area was not simply parabolic only but a, mix, a hybrid mix of key angle and parabolic therefore mix phantom highlights new areas potential uh, potentially important areas so that was from our last map let's let's cover now let me make sure i'm in the right map i got one more here that's our shiba we're going to come back to that in just a few minutes okay here's another look at brett we got some prophetic words we'll come back to that some things that triple j said okay my current map is this for brett we are currently in a downtrend, which has one, two, two points here that start, give us a source point, secondary point, verification. What we're looking for is a primary health building on top of this line. This is going to start telling us when we're going to start looking for Brett to go up. Okay. However, we got our first area where price was starting to disrespect. That means it's coming up and coming back down below. Now look at the time frame of this time. This was just this, the end of this last month, the 27th. Okay, 28th, 27th, and then we're going down from there. Is that a big surprise? No, because USDT.D was about to reverse during these time frames. So we know that we were looking for Bitcoin to start reverse over the last what, week or so, two weeks. And that's where we did start reversing. Okay, so in this case, the market's getting pulled down a little bit. That's understandable. Now, if we're in a downtrend, if we're in a downtrend, we want to hunt something. Does anybody remember what we hunt if we are in a downtrend? We hunt the... Who remembers it? We hunt the up move. Good job, Investbox. Good job. When you're in a downtrend, it's actually not that hard. It's, it's actually a lot simpler than what people think. When we're grading the chart, we can simply find the times when price is moving in an uptrend. Now, there are even exceptions to the rules where price will move sideways, and that classifies because there's a type of ticking motion the move is very severe in the beginning and then it starts doing something like this okay that's that type of fanning effect oh thank you thank you sweet coffee now what we see here in this area is that as price is going down there's another up move that can be cut okay now we already drew our last targets on here so i'm going to delete some of these targets they were at 0 0.07 and 0 0.8 price came down there and bounced quite nicely on this daily chart okay so we looks looks like we drew them around september 15th prices already bounced right there spiking direct, directly to those lower numbers so what we're going to do at this time is going to stretch those out and uh, this one i'll just delete okay now i'm going to draw the sword cut we already drew the health we don't need to draw that sword cut price already bounced at that sword cut from our previous chart that i showed you 
I'm going to stretch this one out here a little bit. And then I'm going to show you another weakness that may be appearing on the chart. Now, some of you guys remember I've been very bearish, or I shouldn't say very bearish, but I've been bearish uh, on USDT.D. Um, sorry, actually bullish that chart, which means I'm bearish the market. When that chart goes up, Bitcoin primarily goes down. When Bitcoin goes uh, down, USDT pr primarily goes up. So they're the inverse of each other. And one of the things I'm seeing is a lot of weaknesses appearing across the board from a lot of crypto. So a lot of cryptos are starting to show some weaknesses and this is not something that's really good. Apart from the big, the big three chart, which shows, it's called total three, that shows all coins look like they were in a good position last we looked based on just one structure alone. Now what I'm going to look at, one moment, get my screen locked. All right, you guys can see me still? All right, what we're seeing here is that we were in an oscillation first I'm just gonna prove this to you okay we are in this oscillation now we know that's the correct oscillation because when we take our key angle which is up here for Brett and we bring it down to our lowest energy center now these are our energy centers here the center of this energy center of that energy center of this energy center one especially with round structure when I place that at the third energy center which is here it becomes what we call a phantom angle. This is a duplicate angle. This is a ghost angle. It's invisible, but it gives us a lot of important information. What happens at that angle and what doesn't happen at that angle are very important. When I see restructure and price responding to that area where price is supposed to bounce, if it doesn't bounce at that area, instead moves underneath and comes up to the underside of that area, especially if it experiences rejection. And in this case, there's two times of rejection, one on this candle, here, from here to here, we're getting pushed back, and then we get really pushed down properly, almost exactly on the line itself, right here. See the line? It's about right there. And I got it in pink. I'll make it even really thick so you guys can see a big, thick pink one, and then I highlight it in white. Okay, so when we're experiencing that rejection in the places, or once we start moving through those lines and building structure on them, I know I'm looking for price to go the opposite way. We're looking for, we're seeing price rejection. Imagine like a man who uh, is bouncing on the roof, but he falls below, one floor below, and he still bounces up, and he hits his head on the roof that was once his old floor. Now, those old floors become new roofs or ceilings, and then we can start expecting prices to start moving down. And th the same inverse is true many times on the way up. If prices were moving down and they start bouncing, we look for them to go up. Okay, but in this case, we can see that means weakness. Okay, so from this range approximately here, we're looking for the uh, prices to start moving down. Now I wanna see health coming in, and we can see some structure here for Brent, and that's nice, and the oscillation is approximately here, by the way. Okay, it's moving in this channel here, so to speak. But what we can see is that we also can use a projection by taking the distance from this oscillation, that very first oscillation, and moving that projection down the duplicate distance below. And that gives us supports approximately in the future along this track. Now we've already labeled that for you guys. It's called DP here on our maps. You guys can access all of them on our website. Just type in the crypto you're looking for on the website and it'll pull up our most recent maps. But if we move that basically to this season, we now know the support for below is currently around 0.379 cents. Currently today's price is eight cents. So if there's a flash crash or prices continue to fall, I know that if it fell today, the number would be approximately a 0795. As time goes on in the future, we'd be looking at that number rising because we don't trade based on price alone. We trade based on the angle. So if time goes up, just say to the end of October, here's October 30th, right about right there, the number is five cents. So that support is going to go up higher over time. Now, what I want to observe is there future weaknesses appearing. One of the ways we can look at that is with volume. Now, I'm going to go really quickly. And again, if you want tutorials on our lessons page, I'm going to pull it up for you. You can come right to our website. It's going to be in the description after the video is posted. Otherwise, patreon.com. I'll make sure I put it here at the top because we're broadcasting on YouTube. So welcome, everybody. Patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven and that's our website now on our website i can type in the cryptos i'm looking for here right here in this search bar otherwise i'll just type in lessons ok 
okay, when I type in lessons, then it's going to pull me uh, to a page that looks like this. And I'm going to show it to you. If you guys are new, this is the page. This is what you're going to see pinned at the top. And you're going to click show more. And this is lesson one. There's a YouTube video. And here's all lessons one through 13. Lesson, four, lesson 14, which we did VSA intro number one. It's been filmed last Wednesday and other lessons are going to be found. We also have the filming for our 5.0 series, which is our older version of sword method. But all the lessons we talk about, all the different analysis we can perform, plus some practice, 6.0 case study. We did a case study for io.net, okay? Key reverberations, mixed phantom, tiger analysis, thunder cuts, sword cuts. So let all that be a blessing to you guys on our website. It's $18 for the full month. You guys can save the videos if you want to. But otherwise, you're going to keep getting accesses and invites to the live links every day. Now I'm going to show you a few more things and we're going to move on from Brett, okay? So let's go back to our Brett chart. We analyzed some structures using key angle analysis and the family of key angles. Now what we're going to do from here is we're gonna finish up. After we built our map, I wanna show you that if we're still rejecting in this area, but we're building up a little bit on top of here, we want to change to a higher time frame. So I'm gonna to move to a two day chart and then I'm gonna look at a weekly chart and I'm gonna see if this oscillation is still holding at the relative angle. Okay, now primarily from the wick, wick, core, and core, I'm still accurate, but I'm gonna show you how to be a little bit more accurate. See this, how we're just using wick, 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 one core, but look at this wick here, it's sticking out here, okay? If we were wanting to adjust the angle just a little bit to compensate for that wick, and if I stretch it out just a little bit, I'm still hitting the wick on this angle, not exactly the core, the meat of these two pairs of candles, but I'm still now within underneath this trend line. So there's a little bit of an accuracy that you can get sometimes by just testing the cores or the wick side, okay? And sometimes there's a mix of core and wick, okay? And this is why we do the, the analysis for verification. But right now I have wick one, two, three, four, and then I have the core. So this could be still the channel. Now to confirm if this is correct, we can do as a key angle. And basically what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to make this solid for right now. So this watch line, we're waiting for prices to break and build above in a primarily in these areas. We can also calculate the price. So if I want to know the breakout price for, for Brett, I can go to a, this two day chart, go straight up in the air and hit that line. So now I know the price is somewhere around $9.094, which means if I see some new structures, I see price break above and sit down, I may be thinking that price is ready to start moving into some kind of healthy area, possibly. But right now, the one that has precedence is not so much this fish here, but rather the larger structure at work, which is possibly this area here because we're still within the range of sword cut. We're still within ranges where we're still looking to go down. This larger oscillation, which showed us that prices broke into weakness in those areas, is still the one that's primarily active. We're still in this downtrend, aren't we? We're still coming down. So I'm not just only thinking about this oscillation, but rather the power that bigger oscillation still has in play. If we looked at them like fish, they would be this would be like maybe a little fish here, and this would be the larger fish here, okay? Now it's a simple way to think about this, but we're just talking about opposing powers, opposing waves of buyers and sellers. Now if I'm primarily experienced some health based on that smaller oscillation, which we talked about early at the beginning of the video, and that led us to be healthy for a season. But once we hit the major power, we got knocked back down again, didn't we? The major power right now being here. So is this one correct? What we can do, we have our source point, we have our secondary point to confirm the weaknesses. We can take this as if it was a key angle. Say so I put the word KA. I'm going to duplicate that angle and treat it as if it's a ghost, what we call a phantom angle. And I'm gonna bring it to our lowest energy centers within the oscillation in the foundational area. So if this is price moving down, the oscillation, of us moving down. The beginning of that area was somewhere to this side, and our lowest energy centers are here at the core with this structure, here at this core, or just at the weeks, wicks along here. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to duplicate that angle and put it in those locations at the beginning. So here's our phantom, and I'm going to move it to the wick side. When I move it to the wick side, what am I seeing? When I place it here, what am I observing? We're seeing price bounce here. We're seeing price bounce here. We're seeing price bounce here. Okay, how do we all know that? I didn't draw these down here, did I? No, we drew the key. If you have the key, it unlocks a lot of the chart, a lot of the door. So we can see structure telling us, hey, if we're going to bounce, we should be bouncing here. Now we're bouncing down a mountain, right? We're still in a downtrend. For, for me, it's dangerous to buy this unless I'm in a more healthier territory. However, it's all in the same zones or ranges or areas by which we should go. Combine that with other analysis, such as target system, when we say, hey, there's a support here based on the target, and we spike down all the way here, yet find closure here that's a little bullish, but not enough to change the game because we're still playing the game against a much, much larger opponent. When we look about, when we think about charts, and I'm just going to take this moment, to, a minute to show this. When we think about charts, especially if you're new to this, it's important to, prov to collect an unbiased analysis of the both of all the things you can see really i should say especially if you're beginning if you're working with teams of people or if you're working with multiple people you want to be unbiased let the chips fall where they may as the world says do the data okay if i see bullish analysis i want to combine that with any bearish analysis i see if i see a story starting to form i can actually start seeing the waves of battle because as price doesn't just move up and down it moves in various ways okay but as we, as it is, this is the current oscillation for Brett. You'll see that as we go through today's uh, live session. Okay. All right. Now, if we're still in this os oscillation, what is the trend? Up or down? The trend is what? Oops. We proved it to you. The key angle is the same as the phantom. The trend is, and I'm going to finish up here. There's only two other things I'm going to show you about this chart, and then we're going to use some of these same principles with with the charts going forward. So it's basically the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, nobody knows it. The answer is the trend is down. Okay, the trend is down. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, the trend is down. We're going to hunt the, as Investbox said, the up move. Where's the up move? The last up move for Brent is here. See, we came down, then we came here. This is the flow of price. The last structures we have, one of them is a round structure, and then the others are a little small, but we can draw the trend line from here to here, and we can find, as a watch line, our next weakness, especially if we're still in this downtrend. And that trend is going to be approximately here. Let me give you a color, red primarily, just to highlight some of this. So our last, let me lower this opacity, so our last behavior that we, we have, therefore, is price breaking right about here. Therefore, our shortcut is going to be approximately there. Okay. So structure under here is actually normal. Now we can see when we came down and we spiked up to these areas, we're two times, one, two, we're actually experiencing some rejection. So this could be the start of more weaknesses for Brett coming in the future. Okay. Our... We're going to do a target system one more time. We have our larger targets. We already did target training, target analysis, volume target analysis, which is found right here. Volume, oh, where's that? Less than 13, which is last week. Okay, I'll show you guys where that's at in just a few moments. On our website, if you go just to our normal page, I want you guys to have this so you guys know how to practice volume target analysis. I should have copied those links in there. I do apologize. And here's our main page. And if we just scroll down, here it is, volume spread analysis. This was uh, lesson 15. And if you guys are dive members, you're going to have all the links to that. That was our meeting with Brandy. There's episode 258, Bonk, Aqua, Baby Dodge, all that stuff. There's the images for those. Word room reading, ministry refreshing advice, word room men and women. There's our last chart room, 255 before that. Every Wednesday is the tutorial, so if you missed it, it's probably going to be on one of these Wednesdays. There's our volume target analysis, and there's the link. And I'll make sure I edit that so it's all in one page. But I want you guys to be able to see that. Let's finish up with Brett, and I'll move on. Because when you learn these principles, you can apply them to almost every crypto. What we see right now is that the last up move has been cut. 
if all you did was just trade up moves in a downtrend, shorting those, you would be more successful stacking the odds in your favor. If you were in an uptrend, it would look something like this, and all you did was hunt down moves, you would be more right than you are wrong. You're going to stack the odds in your favor. Every time there's a down move and you cut it, you're going to have a higher chance to go uh, up if price is in an uptrend. So if this was an uptrend, which it is, and this is how we did USDT.D, the last cut is here. I don't want to be, if this was in an uptrend, I wouldn't want to be bearish. I would want to be bullish only because I'm going to stack the odds in my favor. And that's what we see. However, this is, I get, I flipped this up just to teach you the principle. Right now, this is a downtrend. Okay. Now our next big target that hasn't been hit is 0.5 to 0.4. And guess what? Now we're approaching point of interception, which means the targets, which were here and here, are now starting to overlap the support. Okay. They're starting to hit the support, which is the phantom. So they come together in this season, I call this a vortex. Other uh, technical analysis teachers may call this a confluence or something in that category. But it's a series of events that causes, I call it vortex because they look like little like V shapes. Sometimes they're on the top side, sometimes they're on the downside. This season is around October 30th. Okay, So if we wanted to put a little bit of notes here, we can do a little call out. And I'm going to put this vortex is around October 30th with supports from 0 0.05 to 0 0.04. Okay, I'll put the date on here, October 30th, 2024. So if I'm looking for prices to reverse, if it's just one trend line, that's okay. But they get, it's like they call in the reinforcements once we get to these areas with vortexes. Okay, so we can use those to our advantage. I'm gonna check, uh, one more thing, I'm gonna check some volume and do a quick volume spread analysis. Before I do that, let's read uh, what Triple J said back in the day. I hear coming back to 13 area cents, watch for that move, what was the date for that one? Then five cents down here, possible settle down, then go straight up, 0 0.05 cents, not to stay there long, going to hit a dollar sooner than people think. You should put that in August, 2024. September 7th, 2024, Triple J said three, four, five, I heard three. I believe it will hit three, four, five. I also hear the Lord saying 0.30 cents. I believe it will be a quick candle. Are we going to hit five cents pretty soon? It, it, I don't know if it's going to be very soon, but there's a possibility that if the markets take a downturn, this is the area where you may be looking to buy some bread. So if you're going to buy bread anyway, this may be the area. Now, again, everything in this video is comedic purposes only, never to be taken seriously. Nothing in my videos ever to be taken seriously. Okay. The other vortex we have. In addition to this oscillation as a phantom, the addition to this target is the DP point. Remember that we talked about the duplication of the current oscillation here. We teach that in lesson number, we teach this in lesson DP. I think it's around lesson four or five on our website, on our lessons page. Okay. I'm going to move up these around these tracks here so you guys can know. I just put colors here to help me remember what behaviors we're primarily expecting or to look for. Health above these lines, weaknesses generally below here, but now I'm gonna put this closer to sword cut. I'm gonna shrink it down, not it's just about there. I'm gonna take one picture and then I'm gonna finish up with the volume. Okay, in a volume, we talked about the three relatives from, from volume spread analysis, intro number one, relative to a volume, relative to itself in the past as a macro, volume relative to its average on the line and volume relative to the range of price and prices movement okay so as we look at price i'm going to hide my lines real quick one moment you got a new mouse and sometimes i scroll too much okay so as i look at volume this is the type of coin that i believe it came out approximately here in those days okay so what i'm looking for did the professionals enter into this crypto are they still in this crypto? That's the primary concerns I have with the crypto. We're going to use this today as we look into a few other cryptos. Okay. What I see right now as we look into in the volume is as we were coming up, I'm going to show you this real quick. As price was moving up in these directions, the volume was coming up. However, weakness ensued. Our trend lines were broken. 
We never made any new highs, no new structures. Price went to the side. Professional selling has to happen during up moves and professional buying happens in down moves. You guys can further research this on our website or on tradeguider.com. They talk a lot about the structures of ESA, Tom Williams, anything by Tom Williams or Gavin Holmes or Wyckoff. They teach a lot about volume in that. Okay. What we can see is they're passing off their holding from ultra high volume at the top of the market. They were dumping. We can see this in hindsight, approximately about right here. So from this area, we can see them passing off their holdings. They got out of Brett. Did they get out of in Brett? What we want to see, if we're going to be throwing our money or looking to see something longer term, is we want to see professionals entering. The we're going to see that when we have down moves, down bars, with closes near the middle or really off the high or closes near the origin point of that crypto. In this case, uh, as price is coming down, we can see that we have these candles that are closing near the origin point where they started long wick okay in a down move ultra high volume what we want to see primarily is a gradual increase in this case we saw some buying here and then in that zone when we come down here we have a no demand situation which means that they bought up the supply at this point after the watch line is drawn which is approximately these two points here health can ensue and price can move up so they bought here some, they exited here, they got out. When did they get back in? Our first large down move is experiencing those candles that are closing near the origin point. Look at the relative area for volume, ultra high volume, a slight increase in volume. I would say they're starting to buy in this range, which is good for Brett, okay? As we come to the second area, however, back to back, we have an up move and up bars, and in these up bars and up moves, closes near the low, followed by a down bar and weakness. We can see this in high sign, so we can read this area and say what was happening here. Compared to the volume that was happening in this area, it's possible they were selling. So it's a very brief time of buying and some dumping, which is not really good. This, in, uh, this is a daily chart, but for the week, it's going to look like a shakeout, price moving up and down. So this is a wash. So the last thing that happened was they dumped. Then there's a shakeout. Price continues down. Generally after a shakeout, a shakeout, the average rule is price is gonna continue going where it's going. Now, the last move is what? An up bar, an up, an up move slash up bars. Okay, so the up bars are here, but the up move is the principal. And remember, professional selling has to happen in an uptrend by professional. So we're talking about the hedge funds, financial institutions, banks, the syndicate trading things like that okay so last up move was the segment but look at the volume increase or decrease you guys tell me looks like a decrease that's right lamont oh, no look it look carefully i'm going to draw this really carefully if i look i can see the average is actually starting to increase see the candles getting bigger the flow even the averages are starting to get a little bigger here now the average in macro is coming down so we can't be fooled, but we're just talking the relative segment. So let's mark off the relative segment. I was comparing them to those other bigger candles. Oh, yeah. So if we look in this segment here, from here to here, we actually see in that segment, relatively, the average is price is starting to increase. Sorry, the volume is starting to increase. So if the volume is increasing on the uptrend, sometimes that's a test of a rising market. But if we see or, uh, or testing to see if there's a market up there, so, so to speak. But if we see weaknesses and soon, that could be a sign of weaknesses. Now I want to see primarily ultra high volume compared to its average as well. Here's the average. Here's our ultra high volume bar. Look what bar, bar it falls on. Let's see what bar it falls on. Would you look at that? It's going to fall on our ultra high volume up bar, Mr. Long here, followed by very small spread candles and weakness. Plus the overall weaknesses that just came in. So it could be the last thing they did was dump here they're dumping some more where are they buying where did they get in the last place they got in was still in this block of prices if anything we're going to be seeing primarily possibly what triple j had said prophetically she said that we may see five to four cents or uh, five cents a quick move to five cents i wouldn't be surprised now that we put all of our map together guess what the price is here anybody want to guess you don't have to, it is five cents. 
So we can see a blending of some of the prophetic words coming to content with some of the structures that happen. So if all we did was perform volume spread analysis, we can see it's not looking good right now for Brett. We can see they dumped. This is a wash, shake out. This is a dump. They bought, but the block was down here in those areas. So if we're looking for Brett, we may say, I might want to try to buy it later on because I'm probably going to get a better price. We compare that now with the chart in this downward oscillation, price moving downwards, coming in these areas, we can say the last thing that happened was weakness. And I'll make sure I highlight this for you guys to have it. The last thing that happened was, hey, weakness. Now we're rejecting a sword cut, highs of around 9 cents, 0 0.95, ain't going to impress me because we're still in this oscillation. The last thing that happened was the up move. We hunted and uh, weakness is ensuing. So now if we're going to short, those are the times we'd want to short or those are the times we want to be more bearish. And we got to be really careful about being long right now. Brett, I can get myself in trouble if I'm long Brett in a downtrend with weaknesses ensuing. But those vortexes, now we made a strong case for five cents. Do I have any questions, Brett, before I move on to the next crypto? Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions, comments, Brett? Entry, somewhere closer to five. If we're going to be getting it anyway, we might want to get it at five. To be sure, I want to really be structurally, I still want to have structures on top of this white line. Uh, uh, at the time, right here is around closer to eight to nine cents. Later in October, maybe possibly November. But from a chart perspective, my opinion is probably we're still going down now that we drew this map. Okay. So uh, I'll put a little text here and I'll move on. I'll make sure I get some good pictures for you. I'll make sure I include again Triple J's comments. Oh, wait. And now I'm going to include my own comment. My song, September. Nope, October. After performing the key angle analysis, I can see weakness has appeared with phantom support at a vortex matching target volume target analysis VTA and DP analysis all around October 30th area from 0 0.05 to 0 0.04 cents. Also, the uptrend move has been broken during a downtrend oscillation. And this is a sign of weakness. After performing VSA, volume spread analysis, I can see professional smart money has exited near the major high. After that, a shakeout, then another exiting of holdings. This does, this makes Brett risky at the moment. I would be looking for lower prices. Never financial investment or trading device of any kind. Any other questions? No questions, Brett? Can we add Mitchie to the list? We might be able to do it today. Maybe. I will at least add that to here. Right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us earlier for our normal Bible reading. We're going to continue with these charts. We did Brett. We're going to do Turbo. Our last exam in Turbo. This is the oscillation. It's a very strong uptrend. Currently, uh, we are... Uh, experiencing some tar swing target vortex. Um, we know from um, point of interception, uh, which I'm going to teach more about, we talked about that in 5.0. When we have major targets that intercept the larger oscillate, os they often uh, act just like step ups do as reversal times and seasons. So it's very possible that our last target was intercepting around here, which is this is when price is reversing. So a lot of times we see those, uh, those point of interceptions, they act like conclusions to, to, to the oscillation. I still don't know why that is. I'm still investigating that, but it's something I've observed over, over a lot over the past few years. So we're still looking into that. Okay. This is our current oscillation. It's in these areas. Our key angle closer to up here from what I understand. Last we drew, I think this might've been a watch line. Let's see, what did I put here around October 15th? A two-day chart, look for volume buying to have happened on down bar before breaking the watch line. I did not see major accumulation happen yet. Therefore, I do not believe it's time for this price to make a huge run yet. Vortex is around October 15th. Okay, let's now, the next vortex round about right here is October 15th for the step up. Let me move that back. We have support around these prices. 
at the low for the vortex. Now I'm going to draw this one, I'm going to fade this one away. I'm going to take this, move it to a two day chart, simplify chart a little bit. If there's health, I really want to see price health come above this line, what we last discussed. And I want to see if this is a key angle. So we're going to duplicate this and bring us to the lowest energy centers in this area, which is around right about here. Now at the meet, I'm getting another support plus another support here. So I'm going to say, that this is possibly the phantom. To denote this, I'm gonna put this on the right hand side and just put it in the middle. So our key angle therefore would be up here. So I have a key angle on top, phantom on bottom, our full oscillation, let me close this. Our full oscillation therefore may be this distance here. If we get breakouts, I'm gonna be looking to duplicate that distance on top somewhere along this track we would duplicate the angle out. But right now that's not the case. So let's continue with this map for turbo. Let's see what things we can find. Okay, that one's already hit. This is in a good spot so far. Okay, I'm gonna check the volume one more time. Okay, we can see strong volume coming in on the down bars, down moves. I do see some dumping here at that top. As we come back down here, we see some more accumulation happening at this price. Then we come back here and there's a no demand situation, very below average volume. We're in, we're somewhere down into these zones over here during this segment, which means they may have accumulated here. I really want to see a stronger accumulation when I'm doing no demand type situations, but it appears to me that they are buying some up here. A problem that we have is these bars here are, are ultra high vol bars, but look where they're at in relative to price. They're just right in the middle here during the up move. So it tells us there's a market here still somewhere for these prices. What I would be actually looking at therefore might be the flat, okay, which we're going to draw right now. And we do our flats in blue here. Okay. This is going to be a multi-touch flat or MTF. I'm going to give you the price. It's at 0 0.0034 if you're taking notes, 0 0.0032. Okay. Otherwise just watch my chart a little bit later, but that's the flat currently. Now, I'm going to test if flats are active. Sometimes flats are not very active for charts. Sometimes they aren't. To confirm this, we're just going to borrow this flat for just a moment and check a few areas. We're going to check the cores. We're going to check the wicks. So when I start here at the core and I check the wicks, what am I seeing? When I check the core, the wick for this area is actually hitting exactly the flat. So this is a sign the flats are working, which means if I'm looking for a top, the top may actually be closer to here. If I'm looking for health, the next health may actually be in that area. And buying here could be risky unless I'm closer to the bottom in the uptrend, maybe this vortex closer to November 14th. But as it is, that's one way to quickly check to see if your flats are active. Do we have a history of verification for the analysis you're looking at, whether it's Tiger or uh, the key angle, the phantom, we're always looking for verification. You don't want to just draw random lines. You want to make sure that price is responding to what it is you're drawing. Okay, let's take a look at some other flats that might be active. I'm going to borrow this real quick. I would like to find at least one more. Okay, here at the core, we got some structure uh, on, the, on the underside of here, which is nice. And then we came down. That's good. Here at the top, here this structure. If we stretch this out, look what we're finding. Can we trust flats for, for turbo? Yes or no? Nobody. The answer is yes, we can trust flats. When you perform that analysis and you're seeing verifications in that chart, you're going to have a higher degree of trusting the flats. Okay. That means if we're going to be drawing some weaknesses and resistance, I want to draw a, we a, a, a health above here and I want to draw a weakness right below it. Okay. On the underside. Now, I don't care what price does at the decision. I just know that's where I need to make, make a decision or price should make a decision. If price is in this area, I may want to consider taking profits if I'm already in this crypto. If I'm not in that crypto and I see price bouncing on top of this flat here, I might think to myself, hey, this is going to be strong. At the moment, with the volume being a little bit unclear, but being in an uptrend, I'm going to be more bullish than anything. Okay, so we're still going to be bullish because we're in the large uptrend and the weakness hasn't the major weakness hasn't primarily been revealed, but that weakness would be primarily underneath this big, large blue line. So just to denote that it's a very big weakness, I'm just going to make uh, just stretch up that 
ball a little bit and put that there. Okay. So I will quickly take a picture. Do I have, I'll get you that price for these two, flat verified. I'll add the keyword verified to it and the price at 008.007. Okay, 008 to 007, that sounds good to me. You can use that as a decision area and I'll update my report and we'll move to the next crypto. Price has come down, that's good. It appears to be sitting on the core for the two day chart. However, in the volume, I see, oh, I know, I know why, that's a good thing. Okay, price is sitting in the volume. However, in the volume, I can see there was already some accumulation. I am not super bullish, though at the moment, due to the overall market situation. I would be, I can see it. Can you guys? I can see weakness appearing possibly after price breaks below the larger blue line near the uh, blue line below. However, price is still in an uptrend and I am not bearish this crypto longer term just yet. I am still bullish. I'm so bullish to neutral. I performed the flat analysis and we can see a vortex around November 10th to 15th, 2024. Be careful shorting, shorting this crypto. I'm going to show you one more thing and then I'll move on. Okay. When we looked at the volume that was in this area, and I'm going to go back down to that one day chart. When I looked at the volume that's in that area, that's right in the middle of these bars, one last thing about Brett, check this out. If we look at the relative block where it's at, these areas, these candles, look where the support is right now, okay? The support is here, and then remember that meat that I showed you on the two-day chart, the core in white at the beginning of the video, closer to here. We're still on the top side of these. Yeah, we're still on the top side of that. So if I'm going to short this that'd be a very unwise thing to do because you're probably going to have another challenge back up to these areas now on a smaller time frame maybe like a four hour chart i'd want to see some buying coming in on the down move okay plus the move cut which right now we're starting to be cut but i'll quickly look at this and on that four hour chart and we can see yes buying is coming in on the down move ultra high volume down bars Okay, round structure, ultra high volume bars on the down move. The candles uh, having a very small spread with still some larger volume, just slightly above average volume. And then here's some more above average volume, just still in this area. So this is a very good thing because we want to see professionals entering on the down move. Okay, plus the watch lines being cut. So if you're drawing a watch line, it's going to be something like that. Now, I don't know if this is the chart you want to trade because I like to have a larger confluence of things, but I'm going to say right now that it's looking good that these are the areas where we may see prices still find some support in battle now. Although it's not my cup of tea, it's definitely something you can see. And the last weakness being parabolic type weakness somewhere about right there. Okay. I will highlight this is a good thing for the volume. Okay. Any other questions? Turbo. Okay. Any other questions? Turbo. I, I don't think it's going to have that big of a problem coming back up to 0060. Okay. And then watch what it does after that. Primarily, I'm concerned with what's going to do about eight to seven. Okay. Triple J says, I hear obviously in turbo, it will clear some dust and then go against the grain. Wonderful. I hear, oh, let me copy and paste this. Thank you. Triple J. If you guys are watching this online 
Yeah, you guys can always find us on our website, patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven, our full lessons page available for all dive tier members. Thank you for your support. It's $18 for the full month, and you get invites to all those invite links and the recording within 24 hours, plus all the image notes that we took and the whole, the whole list of cryptos that you can just find right on our website. If you're looking for a crypto, just type in whatever crypto you're looking for uh, right at the top in the little search bar area, and it'll pull up um, the crypto maps that you're looking for. So here is going to be right there in that search bar. Just type that in. Okay. All right. Let's look at some more cryptos. Bitcoin. God bless y'all. Thank you for praying for me. Oh, I left the lid on. I saw one of these. I saw one of these. I sorry, I left the lid off. Open. At Best Buy, they have these coffee warmers. They keep your coffee. They said it's for slow coffee drinkers. I said, oh, I need that because I'm, I'm up early when we're doing chart room here in Arizona. It's 5 a.m. and on the Wednesdays, it's only I'm up at 2 a.m. So if I'm drinking coffee over two hours, my coffee gets cold. And this keeps your coffee warm. It was like $100, $103 at Best Buy. And it has a little warmer, electric warmer. And then they said, you don't even need an electric warmer because the cup keeps it so hot. And you can set the temperature right on your phone. I said, oh, wow. I want one of those one day. God. They said, the lady said, that's, she says she has one. That's her perfect because she's a slow coffee drinker. Okay, our last oscillation for Bitcoin. We've known about this for a bit. Let's make sure. Okay. This one here, we've been talking about this for quite a while. Our last support being here, we were not bearish Bitcoin, but our last, but bullish. And then our last resistance here. Now, we're going to talk about this back to back with USDT.D because USDT.D tells us primarily where we should be going up and where we should be going down. Okay, so we're going to get into this in just a second. All right, so our last big support, uh, our last big event for Bitcoin was the weaknesses that appear at this track, okay, which we already experienced a few days ago, September 29th. This didn't hit any of us in our community by surprise because we saw USDT at a reversal area. And if UT, USDT.D was reversal area and Bitcoin was also at a reversal area and then we see watch lines broken, and I told everybody this for a Bitcoin map, watch for those watch lines to be broken. Okay, now I'm gonna pull something up real quick for you guys. I'm gonna build up our, our previous map for Bitcoin. Okay. And this is our Monday map search bar. TC should show up here. Okay, here it is. Okay, so our last Bitcoin map, we talked about this oscillation showing here in this area is where we're looking primarily for prices to make a decision. Health could appear above 66. During the week we were here and I said, don't anybody be surprised when you get the notification on your phone that Bitcoin's gonna hit 66. And we knew that primarily because of the whole USDT.D situation. USDT.D, this is the chart. USDT.D was in this range here around 6.17, okay? 6.17 area is where we're looking for it to reverse, okay? And then this is when it started reversing. Bitcoin went up. The next support was here at 5.21. This is where it's supposed to start going up reversing again. And we had a little bit more room. So I said, hey, we got a little bit more room on Bitcoin, just a little bit. But once we hit here, I said, there's no more room. Okay, so there's very little room after here. Before during the week when we're on our way down, we knew this oscillation, we knew that support. So when we were like in the middle, I said, hey, still be bullish Bitcoin. We got room. So Bitcoin should hit about 66. Bitcoin hit 66. After that, it's dangerous to start trading. Now we need to look again at the evidence. So I know to look at the evidence, one of the things we can see on RSI is band pullback starts telling us which if it, which segments primarily should be looking for a strong move in the opposite direction. And in this case, the band pullback for RSI is telling us primarily that we're looking for Bitcoin to reverse, okay, or find resistance at this area. So when we start combining all the analysis, we can start making a better educated decision. When we looked on the bullish side, we found, hey, there's not really a strong pullback for the bullishness in RSI, uh, RSI for Bitcoin at that moment. So when we combine all of these things together, it starts painting the picture that we should be looking for prices to reverse. Okay, so now we can see price reversing in these areas and it's more likely that was supposed to be the case after performing multiple analysis. Now what I'm going to do at the moment is we're going to examine next Bitcoin in the volume. I'll see if we can simplify this volume a little bit by going to higher candles like a weekly chart. We're gonna try and smooth out our volume a little bit and we're gonna 
try to gauge if there's anything we can observe here. Okay, now basically price is oscillating. And I'm going to show you. So if I can move this, borrow the circle, right? In this direction, okay, within this channel. And this is the top, okay? So if we're going to buy, I want to be paying prices closer to the water, bottom white line for Bitcoin, which is around 52. If it's this week, it's around 52, 540. And if I want to buy again, I want to pay a higher price for more security and safety. I don't want to buy right now at a top because it could be wasting my time, wasting my energy, getting me in trouble, be me buying on top. Now, when I combine it with just this only oscillation as the key angle and the phantom, we know where those areas are. We got a vortex coming up approximately in around November 11th. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna look at a few things and then we're gonna see some of the things in volume, okay? I know I seem to be a little bit spread out, but sometimes when I see a lot of things, I have to systematically make sure that I'm able to cover it all without forgetting. <laughs> so what I see by this, and what I mean by this vortex, is we drew our key, our phantom is in place with verification points one two, and three, the meat of this candle, the meat of that candle and the wick of this candle. They're all coming down here and they meet together in this specific area, right there. Okay, so I can calculate the time approximately. This is November 25th. So around closer to November, I'm sorry, uh, uh, November 11th, maybe if I'm being real accurate, it's November 4th to November. This is a weekly chart. So yeah, November 4th to November 18th. So that's far out. Now what I'm going to do Therefore, as I can set some alarms, I can set some things on my calendar. At the very least, I'm going to set a map by placing a call out. And the call outs are under annotation. And I'm just going to put it right there in the little crevice. And I'm going to type vortex. November 4th to 18th weekly chart. So I know that once I get closer to the mid-November, I'm looking for prices to possibly reverse depending on where they're at. So if they're in the sky, they may still try and challenge because when those vortexes come together, they influence price in a positive way. But if price gets right into that crack, that's the highest chances for vortex. Now there's another third scenario where price shoots directly below the vortex. If I have a solid close, that's a sign of weak weakness. But primarily if price comes in for a small landing, especially on the daily chart, I see some nice round structure. I'm going to be looking for Bitcoin to come back up. But until then, I want to pay prices for Bitcoin around 52 grand, or I want to pay prices above 65 with structure. I don't want to chase it right now. I can be just watching prices wipe me out by coming uh, back down because right now we're at the place where we should be thinking about shorting Bitcoin or still close to that place, even though we're already after that place. The weakness already ensued, so we want to make sure that's the case. All right, now I'm going to check again that volume. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you one more thing about Bitcoin. This oscillation, oh, sorry, this support is from these days here around November of 2022. So this is a foundational key angle of sorts. Okay, so this is the this is where our big support is. And if weakness appears, it's going to be underneath these prices. Okay, underneath that. If I see price going underneath that green line, especially if we're under coming up to the vortex i'm going to be very bearish bitcoin now we're going to use usdt.d as our filter to help us understand if we should be still bullish or bearish that but that's the case at the moment okay right now i don't think price is going to fall without a good fight to it and uh, i'm going to look at just a few more things real carefully okay now i'm going to look at that volume like i promised okay so we're going to start uh, i'm going to look at volume in a few different ways I'm going to look at it according to the three relatives, as I taught about in lesson number 15. We're going to be doing a uh, volume spread analysis part lesson number two this Wednesday for all dive tier members. If you're a member or you're signed up on our website, you're going to get that link. 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Okay, on Wednesday. Remember our schedule, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Wednesdays. Okay, And we're going to continue with our, our volume spread analysis teaching. Okay, you get all my slides and we do it and we practice and we start doing all this. So I laid a good foundation. But some of the premises is we want to ask ourselves a few questions. Okay, what are the professionals doing? And that professionals are doing this, their activity shows up in volume primarily. 
So let's do this in a simple, simple manner. Okay. I'm going to take this picture, the screenshot. Actually, I'll use a better one. I'll take two pictures and I'll use this as a quick example. And then you will tell me what is possibly happening so that you know if you're going to be primarily leaning bearish or bullish. And then after that, we'll use our Bitcoin, we'll use our USDT.D to filter. Okay, so let's start with the macro view, okay, which is the larger overall global view. All right, let's break this down into a simple price flow for your viewing pleasure. I'm going to, where's my pencils? Ah, here we go. So we have price flow. Let's use a, a little highlighter here. We can see price coming down, price moving up, price moving down, up, then coming back down, up, and then right now we are in this down segment. Okay, that's the basic price flow for this. Okay, you got it? Now of these, and in those segments, we can say we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six segments we're gonna look at. So I'm gonna look at price from here to here. So the relatives that we're looking at is volume, remember the three relatives, volume, relative to the macro volume, which is the overall volume relative to its average, which is this white line. In our case, it's white, yours may be a different color and then volume relative to the price area. So in this down move, remember the, the foundations or the basic principles is that professional money has to happen on down moves or down bars. Here we have a down move, correct? Yes. Was there an increase in volume, especially near the lows or near the five candle shapes that we're looking at primarily from our lesson? Here we're having closes near the middle with a very long spread. Okay, so for this first segment here if we're going to see professional buying it's primarily going to be on a down bar or a down move the whole section is down so i want to see increase in volume do i see that happening here i see a very large increase in volume primarily in this segment here okay with ultra high volume here's the average there's the average ultra high volume down bars followed by an up bar up moves all closes near the middle a mr long and Mr. middle built all in together so in this segment, what were the professionals doing here is simple. They were buying. When we see multiple areas of buying, we can see where those buying occur and block it out if we want to and use those as support areas as flats. Or we can just look for multiple buying areas and see if what the professionals are doing. Now, if the professionals are doing something, I want to pay attention. If they're getting out, I want to know. I don't want to be last to the party and you don't want to be last to the party. If the professionals, the banks, financials, hedge, hedge funds, institutions, syndicate traders, uh, syndicate trading, they're all deciding to get out, you better be getting out too because you can be messing yourself up. You don't want to trade like a retail trader. You want to trade like a smart trader, okay? Or if you're a long-term holder and you're thinking, man, can I get this price cheaper later on? The answers may be shocking to you a lot of times. We're not going to try to hype. Uh, none, the purpose of this channel isn't to hype anybody up about anything. Okay, your the purpose of this channel is to reveal price action unbiasedly and to give you Jesus and teach you the word of God, which we do before every one of our messages, our chart rooms. And if you were here early today, thank you so much. We read Timothy chapter five, Melody posts that online for us. Okay, the next segment, up move. What is happening during this up move? We're increasing in volume, especially towards the end. Look at the relative volume segment. See volume, strong, a strong increase in volume. Bitcoin's more messy because there's a lot of manipulation in Bitcoin, but you can still get the gist of it. So the relative area which we are looking is primarily in this zone here to here. Okay? So from here to here, we see a strong increase in volume, but we're still continuing to go up for just a little bit more. Now, I want to show you something really carefully because I'm going to block this off. Once we get to the very, very top of the market, Look at the relative volume again. Ultra high volume bars approximately right there at that top. Here's the average, and these are those ultra high volumes. So it's possible that they were exiting, and where were they exiting? Primarily maybe in these segments, especially this segment right about right there. So if we wanted to block this off, we would be looking for support primarily in where? These prices here. And what do we see when price does come down? Support there. And then what do we see again? Weaknesses ensue underneath this area. That's very interesting. Later on, what do we see again? Resistances in that area. See, this is where all the professional 
started doing their dumping. This last move right here was retail. Then we come down, come up again. They can't support the market completely. We're looking for weaknesses. In addition to that, we could have drawn a map, which we've done. And we can see our foundational area matches this third point of support, which is right about here. See price coming down and then we come back up. That's determined by these two areas. So this is all a sign of weakness, especially when we draw and combine it with the sword cut, which is approximately at the break right there, flat line. We draw that. So all of our old maps start showing, hey, where's weakness approximately this time in 2022. So the volume is telling us what was really happening. They're starting to get out. They're also going to be indicating other areas where we're going to look for volume as well. So now I have a few areas of resistance. I got this structure here which is right about there in those days. I can look at what's the volume telling me here. I can also now see in hindsight two tops. So what was the volume telling us here? Was there massive dumping? So here they were starting to get out. So I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put it in yellow, some selling. Next, at these two tops here, we saw that there was some selling here on that bar and then that height, that relative area. I'm gonna now erase some of this to make things a little bit simple again. You all know from our old maps, the, the map structures there, we all know that. But what we're doing today, right now, I'm showing you the volume here, okay? So there's some selling here. And what do we have at this next big top? Even though the weakness in suit and price went down, very low volume. Now, why would we have low volume? Because they already took care of their business. They already took care of their transactions all within here, primarily here and here from the volume. So why would there be very ultra low volume here? Because there's no more supply. They sold most of their holding and without professional support, markets can fall. So if you see very low volume, don't be so much sometimes fooled. You wanna look in the macro, in the past, did they already do the transactions? Because when professionals play the game, you need to remember this. When professionals play the game, they play the long game. They play over years. They'll pass out their holding during every bull run. So all the retailers, yeah, let's buy. And they're like, yeah, you should buy it. You should buy it. And they're dumping their holdings. They're like doing the end run. They're getting out of there. Okay. And that's what happens a lot. Once they already get out and there's no more party left, then things die off really quickly. And we wonder why they do it. Because without professional support, markets fall very quickly. So markets fell here. And that was probably rightly. So we now have some blocks. Okay. Now I'm going to look at one more thing. If they already sold here and there was still a lot of supply, but not still ultra low, but there's still a lot of supply, we're still hitting above the average. It's not a completely no demand situation here. So I want to mark these two areas and we can do that by a flat. So somewhere in this area up there, I want to be looking again at the volume. Now let's do that just right now to speed up the process a little bit. Okay. Actually, I want to go a little bit further. Okay, so they exited here, and I'm just gonna put this in white. Okay, they bought here, they started selling here at the high, they sold here again, okay? Then they sold a little bit here, but there was no more supply. Now, are the professionals in? We need to see the next move. The last segments that we have are the final three segments we blocked out in the beginning. This segment from here to here, this down move. What we want to see is if professionals are really in, we want to see them accumulating so we know they're long-term bullish. And what are they right now? If we look at this segment down here, the relative volume from this low or this area is this segment here. So if we just bring this down in volume, we can see what are we looking at volume? Increase or decrease in the average or overall volume? You guys let me know. What is that? If you're watching on YouTube, I can't see your comments, but if you're in the live, if you're on our website and you're accessing the link, you can actually join us live. Increase in volume. Good job, Jagos. You got it. Okay. We can actually see the volume increasing here. Okay. Nice increase. If it's increasing as price is going down, somebody's putting their foot on the gas. The average retail is doing this. They're saying, oh, I don't want it anymore. And they're selling. And the professionals are saying, thank you. Thank you. This is a sign of a buying. Now, if we see buying multiple times in the same block or same prices, we can see they're in accumulating. Sometimes they'll accumulate over a trend line link over time at different points. And sometimes that's the case and we need to connect those dots when we see them, such as drawing trend lines to there and looking for the next area of accumulation along that track. But as it is, screen. Okay. But as it is, this is a good sign for Bitcoin at that time. Okay. Now I'm going to, the purpose is not for drawing maps right here. 
we already did that and you can find more of those maps on our website but we can see some buying came in so I'm gonna type I'm gonna put here buying so where are the professionals so they got in they took some profit they got in again buying they got in they took some profit they got again and also what we see is very ultra high volume when we see those ultra high volumes without a major sell-off then sometimes we're going to see prices challenge those again now this is a this is a fairly large sell-off here but i also didn't see a no demand situation so there is a really it's a low volume but compared to the average it's not super low which means we're probably going to challenge these areas again we did challenge those areas again i want to see what's happening now at the end of this segment okay so now we go up and as we come up here if the professionals are exiting we're going to see what we're going to see ultra high volume bars up bars or up moves we're going to see closes near the middle near the low we're going to see a smaller spread we're going to see back-to-back -back railroad tracks as i'm looking at this move we can see something here from this segment this segment the relative uh, the relative candle area is what let's let's draw this straight up and down okay i'll just use a ruler how about that move it straight up here's the relative areas for this increase in volume now this increase is it happening in just one area no it's actually happening over this whole segment now i don't see many of those bars here at the top i don't see strong reversal bars the spread may be getting smaller but the oscillation we're not going straight down the oscillation is, is, is as we as we shared in the map from our previous images is very messy here very messy it's almost congestion but it's going down at a slight angle we see all the volume that would indicate there's possible selling, but the candles don't match. And this is why in lesson number 15, just last Wednesday, it's already on our website. Just scroll down. If you're new, just scroll down. You'll see it. This is why we talk about the five major candle patterns that are primarily dominant in volume spread analysis. I'm not really seeing super small spreads as we get to the top. I'm not really seeing those railroad tracks. I'm not really seeing Mr. Long bars, except for this bar right here. I'm going to look, I see ultra high volume bar right there. It's going to be approximately that little small spread. That could be the start of it. And the weakness is ensuing by virtue of these being broken. Now I'm going to tell you, uh, that's where the, sorry, that weakness would be. Are we noticing structures with candles broken there? Let's find out. What am I saying? What I'm going to do is quickly draw these two structures here and here, and we're going to draw them. Now we already did that, but on the chart, earlier and I showed it to you are we weak yet is price in a weak territory for Bitcoin yes or no what do you guys think the angle is pretty fairly correct right is it is it in a weak territory I'll show you that officially on our on our real map earlier right after this after I'm done drawing but are we really weak territory here we are right now you guys tell me you guys want to talk about where Bitcoin's going then? this is it you guys know where Bitcoin's going you primarily know what's really gonna happen okay the answer is no, okay? If we're here, we have a chance to fight in here. Now, I want to see some volume telling me we're going to get out. But right now, I see that volume in this up bar. So it could be, or this up move, this could be the start of some selling, okay? However, okay, so there's our increase in that volume. We're going to We're going to wrap it all up. Here's the increase. So it could be that from here to here, there's some, starting to be some selling. But the candles are not all in, so I don't trust all this selling. The candles are not the shapes I want. I'm not really seeing strong, and the move down is not such. So I want to be really careful with some of the selling. I want to put like a little asterisk on this. Let's see if I can. Let's put a little little thing. Okay, I'm going to put a star. I'm going to put, I'm going to put this. I'm going to say, but wrong candles. I want to see some large, I want to see some stuff like this, those large down bars with closes near the middle. I want to see those large down bars like, with just very small, low spreads. I want to see some of those up moves with some strong back-to-back -back resistances and strong rejections. I want to see these long bars like I talked to you all about in the previous. Right here, I'm just getting a normal up move with almost weakness in some suing, and the weakness is even in that because we're coming down, coming up, coming down, coming up, coming down, coming up. We're very making very little headway. If anything, that's telling us that there's still a market at these prices. Okay? So I want to be really careful. Now, if we're going up, I want to see one more thing. And this is why I took two images. One as the macro. And then this smaller one to measure specifically here. 
by the way I already gave you that image that green line here's where price is here's that green line that I just drew for you guys for everybody and I'll take some screenshots before that's all over but here's the other image for Bitcoin today so what segment is this this is price moving down we already identified this as a downward oscillation here okay here's the oscillation so as we're going down are we seeing a major sell-off in volume you guys tell me we would want to see or sorry want to see large up moves with down bars we don't see that just yet we saw it in the past a little bit so we should be experiencing some kind of downward move but if the professionals are really buying we're going to see as we come down increase in volume and i don't have it i don't have it so this down move may actually actually last us longer than we want okay did you hear what i said we're going down but there's no increase in volume so the professionals are still not participating just yet now as I mentioned before the exception to the rule is when there was already accumulation in the past at those price levels and blocks there is a little bit of connection between these tops up here and this bottom because that area was the block where they really participated remember this little area of prices here that block was approximately from all of that volume so if there was some buying or if there was some more buying or if there was some more selling it's going to be here still way below closer to the green line so I'm going to conclude by saying this if we're looking for Bitcoin to be bullish right now it may need to come down a little bit more through October possibly even November until our watch line is clearly broken okay now I'm going to conclude that by putting that in my report and I'm going to hide all of this and show you here okay so this is again where we need that health it needs to be above this oscillation moment yeah there it goes it needs to be above this line closer above 65 we need to be there before we start talking about going up but as it is I'm going to be looking more towards lower pricing because I don't see the professionals participating just yet and that's going to conclude my report and then we'll look at usdt.d to confirm that any questions for Bitcoin while I'm typing this up? BTC. October 5th, 2024. We can see professional selling possibly at the last high near 73K. After that, price should have come down. Okay, and this is, I'm going to put the word macro, okay, just so we know the major. I'm talking, I'm not just talking about week to week. We got that all the time. Here, if you guys want more of that, we'll talk about more about that. Okay, we, we talked about that closer to the beginning of our report today, by the way. Okay, we can see that price should have come down. It did. However, my concern is that it is very messy with larger fluctuations this we understood in chart room however during this oscillation price has been trending down price has been trending down i have i am looking for an increase in volume but i don't see it because price needs to move up during that downtrend this for this context it means Professionals are not participating. Professional buying is not coming in, is not happening just yet. I suspect it may happen at the vortex of 52,000. Okay, if you guys want to set alarm on your chart, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Otherwise, just well, let's just do that right now. Click one of these lines where your watch line is intercepting. And then click on, we're going to click on, ah, your little toolbar is going to come up. I'm going to hit the alarm clock button and I'm going to put this, I'm going to type this in the message. Bitcoin closer to support vortex. Look for possible support slash reversal. Okay. And I'll just take a little screenshot highlighting what it is. Okay. That I'm talking about. Okay. So put some kind of alert there in that vortex and we can look at the date. It's still around November, like I mentioned earlier in the photos. So we can actually calculate now the time we might see that reversal and then click the button create, of course. Okay, so now I have alarm clock there. My phone will get an alert or my iPad will get an alert when prices get there, if they get there. Okay. 
So I suspect it may happen at the vortex closer to 52. I want to see a strong increase in volume. The other reason we may find support at 52 okay, area is because of the previous ultra high volume in those areas in the long past, long ago. It's a type of volume block. Finally, finally, this is closer to the green line. This is the other component of the vortex. can experience more support or health above the white dotted line on the weekly chart at 65k okay so i don't want to just spike above there i want to be able to be above there this is my report for usdt if you guys want you can take a, script, a screenshot now otherwise it'll be uploaded on my website within uh, 24 hours okay? on our website under the images Okay. Uh, Jago says, uh, so they are not buying, but fully out yet. Yeah, they're not fully out. It looks like there was some selling here and it, it, we are extremely experiencing the oscillation. But if we, and, and here's something else we can do. Actually, I already did this image. Okay. If we look at the relative volume, the majority here was, there was some buying here that happened. And then a larger chunk of the action was buying some selling but the last major move was some buying so if we look at this as far as a macro goes are they really dumping this is a small sell up here a very small sell off compared to the larger buying do companies spend money to make money yes when it comes to the manipulation of the markets you'll actually see professional banks financial institutions they'll actually go against their own position to create a buying frenzy when they're trying to really secretly dump more than they have to keep the buying going, to keep the party going, but they're really preparing for their big exit because they have to sell into all of that buying. So when they're selling, they sell in up bars and up moves. And when they're buying, they'll sometimes dump their holdings to create a selling frenzy, to scare people away while they're saying thank you. And then they shake them out even more and they're like, okay, I'll get out, I'll get out, fine, I'll get out. And they get out and they're saying thank you. And so they'll over accumulate over time. Overall, the largest move here in volume is actually the buying. So this may actually be a smaller sell. See, this is why I put, but wrong candles. There's things that are not right about this full sell. It's not like a full dump. So to answer Jago's question, they're not really selling too much right here, and they're not really fully buying yet either. I don't see that buying coming in. So most likely that major buying is gonna happen either at a support or somewhere lower. Okay, everybody got it? Everybody understand? So this is why we can see they were in, they got in here in a very large way. If they're gonna get in again, we want to see that happen at a support. And we can't take off without us, but we're stacking the odds in our favor by primarily waiting or looking for that. So at the moment, we got room to come down and it looks like it may not be the best November that there is. I'm gonna take a few more pictures. I'm gonna double check RSI real quick. I'll move on to the next crypto. Yep, strong. RSI pullback, but it's about average. I shouldn't say it's just not a strong pullback. Okay, yep. And then I want to check one more thing. What's the thing I wanted to check? We're gonna move on to USDT.D and see how it relates. Okay, no more questions for Bitcoin. You guys are real quiet today. Okay, no more questions for Bitcoin. If you guys are watching this live, I hope this report helps you out. Okay, make sure you guys answer your, 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 your questions. We're going to look at USDT.D now. This is a chart we follow very well, as I mentioned previously. Here we go. So we're currently need to remember that when this currently we need to remember that when this chart moves up, Bitcoin moves down. Okay. When this chart moves down, Bitcoin primarily moves up. Okay. In general. And when we can see the boundaries or oscillations of this area, or we can experience those things or see where those experiences are happening. We can stack the odds in our favor. We know to primarily be bullish, be bullish sorry, we know primarily that USDT is gonna move up once we start building on top of structures on top of this current oscillation, which is, so when price is up here, we can start talking about it moving 
up, up higher and start moving higher. Until then, we may be actually still bearish. Now, we have already denoted this on the charts, and we need to keep track of all the major energies that are moving and flowing throughout here. Okay, the last major thing that's happened is that there's been bullishness up here, so we knew that we were starting to go up. Then we, when we came down to sword cut, price went up again. That was both bad for the market. We had more confirmation at those times Bitcoin was going to fall, and it did. So we weren't surprised here. If we were shorting Bitcoin, we wanted to short it when USDT.D was higher in those three areas. The, the last few weeks, you guys know I called it really well. I said, I am bearish Bitcoin. If you guys all saw my report, it's on our website. We were bearish Bitcoin, okay? Because, I'm sorry, this one right here. What was it? This one. We are bullish Bitcoin to 66. Okay, so we are bullish Bitcoin to 66. And I made a major call. I said, don't anybody be surprised when Bitcoin hit 66. And it hit 66 because there was room. We were still about right here coming off of those. We knew where to look for that reversal. We said, we're going down. We said, Bitcoin should be a good for however much candles we can fit in here. We knew the bottom could be calculated at any time for those prices. And all you have to do is go to that day and move the line straight down. Once we were closer to the end, the number was 5.19. But we knew that the range was from 5.9 all the way down to 5.02. So once we hit those areas, we got to start thinking very carefully about taking profit on Bitcoin, getting out of Bitcoin, something like that, because this could be in reversal. Now, if we're going to experience more weaknesses on this chart, it needs to be here. And that would be bullish for Bitcoin okay so once we get down that's bullish for Bitcoin but if we're going up and we start reversing that's bad for Bitcoin okay so let me show you the last move <clears throat> the last move is this structure here coming down if we were to draw our watch lines we can say that hey this whole area should be looking to start moving up anything in that area we should start moving up primarily from a structure perspective and we can compare it with a few other things but this is where the next health is revealed so primarily, Bitcoin should be in a bad position or bad spot after we bounce off the line. Does everybody understand that? Now, I'm going a lot faster. Today's not the normal regular class, but I'm, I'm giving some of my reports. So this is very much in alignment with what Bitcoin is doing right now. Okay, let's clear up, clean up this chart a little bit. Our last vortex is somewhere around here for step ups. Okay, there's our vortex. That date was around September 26th, and that's when we started reversing on this chart. Okay, primarily that's when Bitcoin started experiencing some rejection. Price already hit this lower target down here from our volume target analysis. Our major support is going to be around this area here as well still. Uh, I just drew this because this is our larger oscillation in the larger story. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I take the angle by which price is oscillating at, it's primarily this flow here. So I know that when price gets underneath here, this should go down and then we should experience a very large bull market. If price is above 9.69, we should be experiencing a large bear market. And those numbers are around 3.5 and 9.69. So I will just, if you want a screenshot, just take it right now and just highlight those numbers so you know what we're looking at as far as the major market structures now we're going to talk about some of the micro structures that are happening but if you all you did was want to know my major numbers those are the two okay those are the major numbers in fact we can make that a little bigger so you guys know it so if you guys are not watching every now and then that's fine but you want to know when those major structures come in let's do 28 okay you know that we're going to be we're going to be looking for our markets to crash above those areas and we're going to be looking for markets to rise above here in the meantime that's there's stuff to measure in between all right let's go further for those of you who want to more know more of the immediate future okay here's a two-day chart look remember this is our oscillation shorter term a two-day chart this is from march of 2024 this year all the way to today okay march of 2024 to this year this takes a long time guys this is now we're not we're talking about the larger things when you see this happen. Of this smaller oscillation, and I'm going to paint this picture for you. I'm going to I'm going to just paint it right on so you guys can understand this in a simple simplistic way if I can. So, of this oscillation, price is flowing here, right? It's just going here. I know that I'm going to be thinking about weak, weakness for this chart here and bullishness for this chart here. So, 
One of them is going to be good for Bitcoin. It is this one. Okay. This is good for Bitcoin. Okay. So what we did is we talked about, and that's not Bitcoin. Bitcoin. What am I doing? Sorry. I shouldn't have skipped third grade. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have skipped third grade spelling. Okay. And this area is bad for coin. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on this just so you guys can see that and, and, and have you remember that. So in a simplistic, very simplistic way, that's your flow. Okay. This is where price is moving. That's a good area. This is a good area when it goes down and this is a bad area when it goes up. Okay. Cause remember this works opposite of Bitcoin save to photos. Okay. So now if I go down, I'm primarily looking to come down in two areas. Number one, on this flow of price, which is the parabolic based in price can actually sit on there, but I'm not sold on that because price already did right there on you know, July of 2025. And then we went up. So I'm not so keen on price needing to do that anymore. The other area we would look for support would be at sword cut. But again, price already did and found support right there at the sword cut uh, closer to July as well. Okay. So two for the price of one. So I'm not so much sold that we actually still are going to find a big support. However, the vortexes of those are closer to, we already experienced that vortex. That's already September and we are, so we're not going to be so much concerned. So for this one, I'm going to say, we're going to fade this away and I'll do the next one by the way as well. Okay. So I'm going to minimize that and fade it away. The flats that were at work up here already also acted like a resistance for us twice, one and two. September 5th and August 4th area. Okay. So that's already in play. Okay. That's already in play next. Therefore, what's up for us? Are we in an uptrend? Overall, we are over the last year since 2018 over the last year. We're actually still since 22 in this larger downtrend in a larger downtrend. We want to hunt something. We want to remember to hunt the up move. Here's your up move. It's this. That means that if price is in this area, we're looking to come down to our next supports. We have therefore need to find where the next supports are. Let's find them. I have here this line here. I put a, the word monthly on it. So let's go to the monthly just to confirm what we're looking at. And then we'll conclude our report. Okay. And then we'll move on on the monthly chart. It's not the strongest. Let me see if I can move. It's not the strongest support, but it does include this wick right here this week and these cores. So it's approximately somewhere in this zone. There may be a smaller support, but you're going to notice something. It's a very little verification, meaning when I place it on the top, I have some kind of support. The angle could be a little bit off on the monthly view. Oh, that's a two month view. Let's go back to the monthly view. Yeah, here it is. Here's the monthly view. I have very little support. Those three points are nice. That may act a slow price down and bounce us up. Now I'm going to find out the exact price by taking the label and moving to this current month and I'm going to bring it straight down. So if we experience a very large up move for Bitcoin, I'm going to be watching next 4.20. Okay. So I'll take that picture just to remind you of that line and that angle one month chart and I'll highlight that line for us. Okay. So there may be some support at 420, although I'm not, which will be bad for Bitcoin at that time. Okay. I'm not so keen on that because that means the price would possibly reverse and go back to a bad position. All right. So let's go back to that weekly chart and finish up with volume. So I'm going to highlight these and we're going to look again at volume and see what the professionals are really doing. Did I just delete price? Did I delete price? Yes, I did. How could I, I couldn't delete. Oh no, I didn't hide my drawings, simplify this for everybody. Okay. So again, the last major move or the last shorter term move since 2022 is this downtrend. If we hunt the up move at the up move, are we seeing ultra high volume or increase in volume? I just see one ultra high volume bar on up move here, which means there's not such a strong selling pressure right now. Again, when this goes down, Bitcoin goes up. So it's not a strong, it's not looking so strong for Bitcoin to actually go down at least not yet. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, Bitcoin to go up 
at least not yet because remember when this goes down Bitcoin goes up so if we're looking for this one to really go down I don't see that just yet so I'm not looking for Bitcoin to go up in a huge way at the moment which is very much in alignment with what we've been seeing for our Bitcoin chart okay so now we go back to this what about this last down move we're gonna see what the last major thing the professionals are doing you guys tell me this chart was going down we're having ultra very long bars these ones are like shakeout types closing near the middle and this is some small railroad tracks but look at that look what was happening during this whole segment as we start going down from this days we started going up in volume the relative move is approximately here to here so in this down segment there's an increase in volume so the professionals are reversing their position they're starting to buy this which means relatively price should move up on this chart which it did now did they get out are they actually dumping no it looks like they're actually accumulating so let's put this in context the major move is for them to accumulate I'm gonna put this in the text so you guys all follow along because this is a little complicated the major event for USDT D is that the professionals are buying this and there is not a major sell-off at least yet that means primarily this chart should go up okay somebody remind me now what this means for Bitcoin okay what does that mean for Bitcoin anybody remember when this chart so primarily they're not dumping so this chart should continue moving up in the future we should we don't really see a major sell-off so not a really re strong reason for it to go down it should go up what does that mean for Bitcoin anybody remember you guys are paying attention it goes that BTC should go down more price goes down says Lisa easy says bearish that's correct all that is correct this mainly indicates that BTC should experience lower prices on the larger time frames this is it also says this is not this time for BTC to experience a large rise did you guys understand that so I'm breaking it down for everybody on YouTube today and all patreon so that you guys can understand what it is that we're actually what I'm actually revealing to you in the report just looking at the data I don't care what the data says I just want to know what the data says and then I'll care okay because we don't want to come into this with a Bitcoin t-shirt or this or what that we can see that yes this trend may be broken at some time but it's still within that trend it's still within the correct oscillation as I showed you it's still moving up this way right if it moves down that would be good for Bitcoin so we want USDT.D to come down but the primary move that the professionals are doing is they're accumulating this they came in and if there is prices to reverse we want to see these types of bars up here but I also want to see ultra high volume now right now I have a little of that I want to see a strong increase as we're going up so I know primarily that this is going to go down but I don't have it so it's not the season the data is telling us it's not the season for the Bitcoin bandwagon in fact this may indicate just along with what we observed in Bitcoin here's Bitcoin we're at the top of this oscillation we primarily should probably come back down so anything in this is still normal and right now we're probably gonna go down if I experience Bitcoin at 68,000 I'm just gonna assume it's one of these spikes I don't care I want to see strong structure before I even start thinking about buying if anything I want to take profit on some cryptos if you guys are looking for what's gonna happen in the market next I'm telling I'm revealing it to you based on the data based on the data it's not looking good for Bitcoin we're probably gonna see some down move in major cryptos we knew at the top I took some profit on XRP I said well I'm probably gonna be taking probably gonna be looking to reverse in these areas I called Shiba at the last top I told you guys when Shiba was underneath that structure I said well, we're gonna get to Shiba in a little bit anyway I don't want to go too far into this I just want to make sure you guys have what we're talking about I'm gonna reveal it one more time the major event for USDT.D is that the professionals are buying this and there is not a major sell-off at least not yet okay so that means we're probably gonna come up here one more time this means primarily this chart should still go up or go up 
Okay, this indicates that BTC should experience lower prices on the larger time frames. So Bitcoin should still be going down as this one is still moving up. It also says this is not the time for Bitcoin to experience this rise. Okay, I'm going to do one more, duplicate this one, and I'm going to put the time at it. I'm going to draw, take my ruler, just to remind you guys to draw that oscillation. If you're looking for this analysis to change, it's going to be approximately here. That's going to be your weakness. Okay, and that will be good for BTC. Okay, the same key angle on the top, this is going to be bad for BTC. You guys got it? When this one goes up, it's bad. If anything, we need to make a decision closer to these areas. Okay, so I'm looking for prices to change approximately in these two areas or that area. Okay, what is the price for that area? Oh, and I need to put the date on here and it. So you guys remember this later as a for a record. WW, share this with your friends. Share this if you guys want to. Yeah. There we go. Okay. October fifth, twenty twenty five. Okay. I am bull. I'm therefore not so bearish. I'm sorry. Therefore, I'm not so bullish. Twenty twenty four. The markets. People have been asking me where do I stand? How do I feel about the markets? This is how I feel. Okay. Let's look at Shiba. You guys ready to look at Shiba? Any other questions for this? Triple J says, oh, Triple J wrote some words on here. I'm going to make sure I put them. Tech, uh, right what she t uh, said on here. As Abba spoke to my ears, it's election crunch time. Expecting 45. Okay, let me copy this. There we go. Thank you, Triple J. Okay, and then she means this for Bitcoin, BTC. Oh, I better put the date. Okay, let's finish up with Shiba for today. Shiba, we did this the other day. I'll just show you my Shiba chart. So you guys uh, know my map. If you guys remember, if you guys have any questions about any of my charts, you're just gonna, you're just gonna type in the crypto there. In that, you can type in Shiba, whatever crypto, and just hit the enter button, and uh, it's gonna pull up all the stuff, our websites right here. And these are our schedule. If you guys want to know when we're meeting, when we schedule, these are the meets. You guys can get links or just if you miss the meeting, you can always watch the video recorded. Okay. You can also, you'll see the phone numbers. You can call in if you want to just hear, but it's always good when you have it off to the side. Some people are at work. They got a headphone in their ear. They listen. Can you add DGEN to the list for Monday? Yeah. That degenerate crypto. DGEN. Okay. If you guys have crypto requests, you guys can put them in the chat for Monday as well. We don't have any slots for Monday, so if you guys are watching this. If you're on YouTube, I can't see your comments right now, so I do apologize. But I'll probably see them later if you guys are watching this on YouTube. Okay. Otherwise, just on our website in the inbox, message me right in your inbox. On Patreon, it says you can click message me and put your request. If you guys are a dive tier member, go ahead and request. And today's all Patreon Saturday, so everybody you can at least make sure you're getting some of my reports. And we'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Word Room. Okay, Shiba, uh, we last talked about, I'll remind you of the structure from our September 7th report. Is it on here? Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. We talked about that recent weakness territory, and this is going to show you here. However, something I'm just reminding you guys, we were underneath this structure, and prices was starting to give us some congestion underneath that structure here. But when we check the volume, and this is why we have multiple reasons to check, we have to build a case. I said this, I believe Shiba, that Shiba falls below the 13 area, which is down here, by the way. Where's that 13? That was over there. Structure will hit the sword cut and may fall and spike towards the 007. That's all this stuff for the future still. Here's sword cut. We already hit sword cut only once. September 7th, I wrote, in, me, uh, in the most recent weakness territory, we can see that price should have showed high volume on the upside. But we didn't see that. In fact, we saw higher volume as price hit the sword cut. Therefore, we can conclude the professionals are not interested in dumping yet at that time. So that was approximately August 26th. Okay, August and then September 7th, we're still there. Should we be bearish at that time? According to the volume, no. But according to the map, it's a structural weakness. Okay, that's why we have to use both. The professionals are not interested in dumping their holdings yet. Therefore, they may already be in strong positions getting ready to buy again. We may see buying at the sword cut, 
at 0010, and I'll show you that, which is the mar larger one down here in, in uh, this one right here, okay? At or spike down towards the 007 area, which is down all the way in this white area, closer to here, okay? So that still stands. We can still see that possibly in the future. Now, currently, this is the downward oscillation of a cord candle here, and therefore our last sword cut is where? At this number here. Everybody knows this because you guys all have my maps and my map explanations. So again, if this is the oscillation, the price is the price flow, new structure may be built when price breaks above those areas and is doing something on top. Now, did we break above those areas? Yes, we did. However, we also got closes at the reverberations from the phantom angle. So this is, I put this here, the label is weekly possible mid phantom, which means that the top may be up here, but I also put it's a reverberation or a KR, which we teach about in lesson number, I believe it's lesson number 12. Okay, lesson number 12, key angle reverberations from our lessons page on our website. When you type in lessons, it can pull up all those lessons from 6.0. So what we're looking at, therefore, is me to take this phantom angle, this angle, which is based on our key here, okay, and you can duplicate that angle to the top side, both at the meet and at those individual wicks. One up here, no, oh, sorry, one up here, and another, that angle back, and the other here. Okay, so where I put it, exactly where I put it. Okay, so price, when it rose, spiked all the way to the top angle, which we had that number, and it stopped, and the meat was here, and I told everybody, watch the close, right? And I even drew this line. I said, if you get a close below here, it's weak, we're probably going to fall further. Now I'm going to go down to the daily chart so you can see what, what really happened, okay? We called this really well, didn't we? In live session, a friend called me up. He says, hey, should I take some profit on Shiba? I said, yeah, you probably should. We're probably, we're looked at. Then we confirmed it by looking at the six hour chart on the volume. And when we saw the volume, we saw all those candles. Here's our ultra high volumes with closes near the origin. Some of them closes closer to the middle. Increase in volume as we're coming up higher. Look, look carefully. Okay, just a six hour chart, but we can still see the same of the similar principles. So if we know where to look because we drew a map, then we can combine those with all the technical indicators we traded. So we knew to look near these prices up there. And when we are experiencing prices near there, we can look on the volume and we can see here's the increase, but the candles are not all right. Not all right. They're telling us there's possible selling. Selling has to happen in up moves and up bars. Okay, in this case, it's an up move and up bars. So they were dumping here, which means we're probably going to get some lower Shiba prices. So somebody says, should I take some profit? I said, yeah, you may want to because we're probably going to be going down. And where are we going down to? We can find the next sword cut area by taking the next possible mid phantom, which was based on that weekly chart. So here's the weekly chart again. I'm going to show you. Here's the break, and that's the sword cut at the break right there. Okay. So we knew that this is where we probably are going to be able to buy again if we were buying, if we were buying, or where we might find support if we're buying, if we're in support. So that's just, this is where we're at with Shiba. So let me go to this two-day chart. Price is sitting on top of this area still. Now I want to confirm a few things. Let's adjust this oscillation here. I'm going to bring it a little bit lower. I'm sorry, this is a parabolic support. It's possible something's building. I'm going to fade it away because it's not a big deal, but for the future, I might be looking at that. Okay. Next, if this is an uptrend and we started to break to the health, we're going to want to see support along some kind of support track. And in this case, it's that original, which is the larger oscillation, like I showed you. Price moving here. This was always our top. Now, we're in a new floor. How can we calculate the next high? We're going to use DP projection, which means I'm going to take this distance and we're going to duplicate it out on top of the oscillation currently. We can do that by using our measure line. I already did it for you. It is this one, this area right here. Okay, look where my line is. Okay, and I put the word DP phantom. Do you see the word DP phantom? Okay, so it's a type of phantom because there's a possible larger oscillation network. That's for me to understand. Some of you of S students, you know that. And then also, we can know that's the projection, okay? So it's a type of projection, and I can calculate what the price is at. So if price does go up, what that means is I'm gonna be expecting prices to rise and hit that line somewhere, 
Now it could be if it goes up straight within to say October 19th, I know the price is going to be around 000023. So I can already calculate where I want to have my take profit. But because the line is actually going downwards, that number needs to come down as time goes on. If price experiences a really large boom today, which I don't experience it, I don't expect it, then I know the exact number is 2533. I at least want to take profit somewhere close to that number, possibly near the vortex. Now there is a vortex here based on this smaller sword cut up here that has not been hit. Okay. And that vortex, and I'm going to mark it for you, is in this crevice. So this is an important to, to draw or at least write. Here it is. I'm going to put the date range. It's approximately October 9th to maybe October 13th. October 9th to 13th, 2024, vortex resistance. Okay, if price is above, that will be support. But at the moment, as we're coming up, especially if price comes into that little pocket where these two lines intercept, some people call it a confluence of, in, uh, confluence of influence, where they intercept is that little crevice, it's a vortex. If price is just happily creeping up and it stops right there, I'm going to be more bearish than anything. Be looking for prices to reverse. If price is able to sneak past that and sit on top, I'm going to be bullish. This is why I use, I'm use. i starting to use these dots to try to convey my thoughts on what I'm looking at. But the DS can be placed at a vortex like that. So I'm going to be more looking for prices to do something primarily there. Okay. All right. That's a vortex. And we can just even type this uh, vortex. And oops, I should have put the date maybe here. October, what was the date, the date range again? 9th through, I'll just put 9th through 15th. You can take a screenshot if you want to for Yushiba traders. If you're looking for a time when price may reverse, look at that date, okay? This may be important to you, okay? This vortex, got it? All right. Now, last things, if we are gonna go up, Price should find support closer to a sword cut, in this case here, the sword cut. Would there be any evidence that price is going to go up? We can do a few things. Number one, did we see major buying come in here at the larger support? And if so, then we're going to use smaller time frames to see when that support would come in. Because it should come in along this track, otherwise this is not holding and price is disrespecting and then it's more weak. Which sometimes can happen if the market is really bearish, which I may actually be expecting because of Bitcoin. But we also heard prophecies. Somebody remind me of one of the prophecies we heard about Bitcoin and Shiba. Does anybody remember one off the top of the head? There's one that primarily stands out. Some of the same prophetic intel we've been receiving for quite a while. Anybody remember? Anybody? Nobody? Bitcoin down, Shiba up. Yeah, Wayne's World. You remember that? We've heard it years ago that they said there should be a prophecy that there's going to be a time when Bitcoin goes down and Shiba may move up. Now, this means they've decoupled and they're doing moving opposite. That doesn't happen. It's a rare in seasons. But if this is a season when all of these, some of these major prophetic things are going to happen, which we're seeing exposure, right? We're starting to see it all over Hollywood. We're going to see it more and more. We're seeing it right now in the music industry and it's starting to trickle out. And that's going to ramp up. We heard prophetically a lot of some of these events are supposed to happen in October, but things are going to get really bad. We also heard during election seasons or around election times, there's going to be some big changes happening in the markets. So we're going to see some of these seasons possibly happening soon. Right now, as it is, she was in a stronger position than Bitcoin. It's very possible since she, Bitcoin's still in a weaker position that this might be very well the, some of those seasons. So let's look at vo a volume as far as the three relatives. Okay, relative to itself, as far as the average, relative to time as a macro, and then the other relative is relative to price. So we're gonna look at this zone in price as we're rounding and as we're coming down. So first, as we're rounding, do we have the correct candles that we would normally see on volume? We see ultra high volume, I'm sorry, we have a large down, bar, down bars, down moves, followed by closes near the origin or near the middle. Here's another section, we have railroad tracks, and then here we have the smaller spread starting to spread out, very small. It's a kind of weak, small spread, but still the same. So on these down bars and down moves, I wanna see strong volume. Do we see it? Let's look, okay? Here in the volume, for you guys looking at volume, and 
Get you a few. I'm gonna, I'm simple. I'm trying to simplify some of this. Okay, let me hide all my lines to minimize some distractions. Put aside all distractions. Okay, as we're coming down, the professionals, if they were entering, need to happen. Come in on down bars, down moves. So we want to see a small. We want to see increases in volume. I don't really see a strong increase here. However, we can start seeing some higher volume, which is good. Okay, the next bar, or next time we have railroad tracks, I still see some selling. So they're still not really entering here. This is a wash. Okay, that's the wash. I'm just going to put an X there. Now we have a down move, down bar, ultra high volume, slight increase in volume. Professionals starting to accumulate. This is a two-day chart. So there's, here's where we start getting some buying happening on this block. So within this range, we're looking for volume to come in. Our next down move is this one up here. Okay. And we see what? As we're coming down in the relative relative range, not much yet. Okay. Not much yet. So to be completely unbiased, if we look at this last up move up here, ultra high up bars followed by, I'm um, sorry, ultra high with volume up bars, up moves, increase in volume as we're moving up, this is the dump. So let's put this all in context and put it all together. So the last major thing that was happening was selling. Then they started buying here, but a small amount. There was a markup that ensues, but now look at the next bars. Okay, we want to be unbiased. Here's the next up bars. Look at the volumes. Look at the candle shapes. We're experiencing Mr. Long. Let me use my little pen. We got Mr. Long here. Then we got these two back-to-back -back pairs with closes near the low, middle, or the origin followed by a down bar back to back, like a type of bearish engulfing slash railroad tracks almost, okay? So when we look at that in the context of volume, the volume's way off the chart. If there's professional selling, it has to happen in up moves and up bars. If there's professional buying, it has to happen in down moves and down bars. So they got out, they got in for a smaller amount, and what did they do last here? Somebody tell me what this is there for. Anybody know? Selling. Okay. Therefore, we can conclude from the down move, this is still selling happening. So they got in, sorry, they got out, they got in, they got out, or they dumped, bought, dumped. They're taking profit. So what do we need to see next for us to be really, really bullish Shiba at the moment? We want to see more buying coming in. And is that disappointing news? Yeah, it may mean it's not exactly time yet for Shiba to have its next big run. Even though it may be technically at a support, we really want to see some buying coming in on Shiba. Okay, so I'm going to conclude this October 5th, 2024, Shiba. I can see the last that the last major event was first selling, then some buying, then again selling. For me to be bullish, longer term bullish Shiba. I don't want to have don't want to just have price sitting on health. I want to see a strong entering by the professional or smart money. <clears throat> because because the last smaller event on this two day chart is selling I want to be careful okay we want to be careful so we talked about taking profit on Shiba the last event even though the prophetic is melting in these times and I'll put our website okay we want to even though the prophetic season is that during the time when Bitcoin's going up going down Shiba's supposed to go up we may have to hold back on some of that does that make sense to everybody www.patreon.com slash jsong underscore seven. Do I have any other questions regarding Shiba or my take on my interpretation on some of this data for Shiba? Remember everything in this video is never financial investment or trading advice of any kind. You guys can take a screenshot. I'm going to put a full screen here. And I hope this helps you. If you want to take the screenshot right now. Let's see, that's better. One moment. Ah, there we go. Investbox says the next big run will be unexpected. Nothing impossible for the Lord. Yep, it's true. I wouldn't short. I don't know if I'd short uh, Shiba without any of the further next weaknesses. 
I want to see some more weaknesses. I want to draw some of these foundational watch lines that are really low. If I'm going to be drawing lines from here to here, I got some really low lines. On our actual Shiba chart, you guys have seen me draw these lines, okay, down here. So I really want to see, for me to be really short Shiba, like, I want to be really underneath this uptrend. I want to be underneath this large foundational support, this white line here. I at least may think that Shiba is going to need to find another foundational. I want to see some major buying coming in closer to back maybe to the sword cut. Last time we hit sword cut, it was just a small spike. So I believe, I'm still bearish that we're going to hit that in the future. And then price is probably going to really just take off. It can happen now. It can happen now. I don't think the structure is the strongest for it to go up. And with being underneath the reverberation still exactly where they should be, I still want to be in a stronger position before I'm thinking about really pouring a lot of wealth into Shiba or any kind of significant portion of something. That's how I would view this. Okay, so I'll take these few pictures and they'll be uploaded again on our website. Just type in Shiba Melody tags all of our crypto images and videos. Actually, I tag she tags the YouTube, I, I tag the images. So if I'm missing an image, just shoot me an email and we'll get it to you or we'll put it in the queue. If you guys are dive tier members, you guys can access it. I'm gonna look at Mitchie. Okay, it looks like a flats may be active. We got some verification in the past. We may see flats active. Let's look at quickly some volume to filter out some of these things. It looks like some strong bind coming in this crypto back here in 2024, July. This is a daily chart. And then some very large bind coming in here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so look at the down move. As we get to the very bottom, this pair has ultra high volume. And then we experience an up move. And then we come back down. And then we start seeing the increase in volume happening on the down move. And it's significant. It's significant off there. So we can see buying and no dump. There's not really a dump. There's just lack of professional support. Then we come here. There's not really a major dump, although the candles are in a, a weak spot and weakness is ensuing. We should be going down, but only structurally. So what are the professionals really doing? They're still in. Now check this out. As we come down here again, we have a down bar plus the candle structure is a back-to-back -back structure. Okay, come down straight back up, but look at the close near the middle. On ultra high volume again. So we see two, sorry, three areas of buying so far. Now that's very interesting to observe. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you guys are curious, come to my VSA class. We have it on, um, we're uh, going into VSA number two. Lesson number uh, one is already filmed for VSA. It's going to be this Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember our schedule. That's our schedule, Wednesday. Take a screenshot if you want. Click your little button, click. Join the live session, ask questions, participate. Practice along on, along the screen. Use the zoom annotate. You can draw right on my screens. Use your iPad, use your phone, use your computer, but primarily a, a tablet would work good. Okay. If you don't have an iPad, I would say the, the easiest way to get a free iPad is from your doctor. Just tell your wife after she asks, honey, does this make me look fat? Just answer yes, dear. And you will get an iPad for your eye. Left eye, right eye, doesn't matter. Maybe for some of you guys, it's going to be both eyes. Teach you to call me fat. I tell that joke at the seminar and then after the words, this couple came to me and they were like, you said to get the iPad. And I said, no, I was just joking. It was a joke. I meant iPad like I, and they're like, oh, okay. But I forgave them because I don't think English was their primary language. Okay. We got, I'm going to squeeze this higher and I'm going to draw this. Make sure I'm bigger screen so you guys can see what I'm about to do. Okay. So I'm going to take a picture real quick and I'm going to mark this on your map. Okay, so as we're coming down, we got some buying coming in. Okay, that's bigger. There's some buying. Here's the other buying that we saw. Okay, based on the volume down bars, the prayer, and then the increase in volume here as we're going down. And then finally that other bar here. Okay, which is the right bars as all in the same block where the buying started. See that? And that's so cool. It's all in the same block where it started. Now, the last events, even though we're going down, Right here, we're going down. We're still not going down anywhere further. We can see what the professionals are clearly doing. Without reading volume, it just, we only have structure. But structure alone is not enough. That's why we've been using volume in the past year. Okay. So now we have one more down move. Here it is. Here's that last down move. Small, very small spreads. But look at the volume during that same segment of time. Okay. Let's look at the segment. Let me use my ruler. In school, I think I was rebellious. 
and I didn't like rulers, and I'd break them all the time. And I would say, you don't rule me, you don't rule me. And then the Lord had to break that out of me, instead of me breaking the rulers. Come on. That was cool. We're going to make t-shirts with, uh, it's going to say, Melody has one, this is my cup overfloweth, and it's going to show corn overflowing. So we have, <laughs> don't steal my design. We're going to make some merch, some JSON merch. The little logo on the side just a little bit. You guys can buy some if you want to. More buying. Okay, so what happens, what do we call it when we see buying in multiple locations all within the same area or the same block? What do we call that? Okay, anybody remember? Accumulation. Accumulation. Somebody even put the cloud for accumulate. Was that Triple J? She put the cloud for cumulative clouds? Or is it just the thinking? Cumulus clouds. So we can actually see here we have a cum. Accumulation is the sneaky buying of professional money over time. After all the supply is drained, what you'll see one more time is you'll actually see no demand and then the markup almost always happens after that. So we got buying here August. So let's go over back in June. We got some in July around 8th to 15th. Then we got some more buying around August beginning. And then we saw some more on August 19th. Okay, so around August 19th. Next, one more, as uh, Dr. Mix would say, next. I do a good impression of Dr. Mix, guys. He's funny. I like him. This synthesizer was one of, introduced in 1974. It is one of the most exclusive synthesizers that I own. Next. That's my impression of Dr. Mix. If you guys don't know who he is, you can look him up online. He's a YouTuber. Does some um, music reviews. I like him. It's fun. I don't want to steal anyone's trademark. Somebody said, Melody said to me yesterday, what is your trademark? What is the things you always say? I said, I don't know. Crayons? I read crayons. And that's... I don't know. Anyway, you guys tell me if you know what my trademarks are. What's my little quirks? What do I always do? I don't know. Here we go. I move, I move down. Look at the volume. It's steadily increasing. It's difficult to see. Here's our ultra high volume on a down bar. Look at the spread for that bar. Look at the spread of that bar. It's very little. Man, this is really good. Christina Kelly, good job. Okay, so we're seeing the down bar. I'm oh, sorry, down move. Ultra high volume uh, at the very end and a steady increase in volume. So we can conclude more. Again, this is buying again. So we're seeing accumulation in multiple points. Going to be here. We don't just have a single session of buying, but we actually have what we call accumulation all in that move. So as we come back down one more time, what I'm looking for now is either a no demand situation or just more buying. Okay, because that means there's still more supply. If we still see ultra high volume in these areas, we're going to look at this relative to the other uh, sessions, actually. Okay, I want to look at it relative to the other sessions. Does anybody know why I look at it relative to these other sessions? Anybody want to guess why? Since we're still here, right? Why am I looking at, at volume relative to these other sessions? Every time they're buying, what are we primarily looking for? Anybody know? Anyone want to guess? I gave you a clue earlier. Actually gave me the answer earlier. This is not a really volume tutorial, but I just want to know if anybody telling a story. Yeah, it tells a story. It does. It's telling a story. Good, Christina Kelly. Anyone uh, else you, or what kind of story do you want to elaborate more? It is telling a story. Strong or decreasing strong bump. Yeah, you're close. You're very close in VestBox. Okay, very close. There's another more specific way, but yes, it is telling the story of decreasing volume. What does that tell me though? What is if I see if I'm seeing accumulation combined with a decrease in volume at an area of accumulation, what does it tell us? You guys think like this, you're gonna be successful. It's over a matter, it's only a matter of time. Okay. Drying up, good job. Okay, We're drying up, or what I call, and I'm gonna put this here, everybody watch, draining of, not training, draining of the supply, right? Draining of the supply. Let me see if I can make this. I want to make that bold. There we go. Okay. Draining of the supply. We can see, let me put uh, the date on the website. Just, so you can share this. Patreon.com slash JSONG underscore seven. If you guys are watching this and you want my content, come to our website. Sign up. Thank you for supporting us. You guys keep me on the air. I'm not always on YouTube. In fact, I haven't done a report on YouTube for a while, but I'm here four days a week on our website. Okay. October 5th, 2024. Mitchie. We can see buying along the flat, the multi-touch flat or MTF flat line. 
around what is the price closer to 10 cents around point cents it's actually yeah about 10 cents and cents we also see a strong decrease in the volume at those areas and I'll explain what this means this is draining out of the supply once the supply is drained a markup or rise in price is not far away now that works the same way when it's a selling and a, and a drop okay happens it works exactly the same way but in this case all it's accumulation so we'll come back and visit some of these principles because we're going to be going over this on Wednesday and then there we go so let me talk about this okay so what we saw was as we we're coming down the the big bind was happening along this track okay all the bind was happening along this track we can see that but we also need to look at volume according to the three relatives and I taught this in my lesson on Wednesday so if you want to please watch that lesson you're gonna learn the three relatives where's the relatives it's Oh, it was a picture I taught. The relatives. Yeah. I'll get to see you guys later. The image. We're going to cover it again on Wednesday. The relatives I've been talking about all today. Price, volume, relative to its macro. The overall story. Don't forget that. Price, relative to its average. That average isn't everything, but it's part of it. It helps us read individual bars. Then, we're going to also use price, volume, relative to the price itself. The area. The price is whatever range. In this case, if we see the support along this using a map, we know to look in those areas on volume. So we can actually see, hey, at this price, what is happening at volume? Then we know where to look. So when we look at those volumes, now the volume starts making sense. We can see, hey, that's a bind. Those are the volume candles that we're looking for. That's the bind structure we're looking for. And if it's blurry, when we read it in context, it helps us fill in the blanks. We can start now painting a picture of accumulation for this crypto, and then we can also start reading the macro of the volume after we painted that story. So now we painted the story, and we can see that hey, the major volume at those areas is being going down, and this means that what's next is a no demand situation is imminent. If we go down one more time, we may be looking at even lower volume or a no demand situation, which looks something like this volume bar. Okay, and if we see that, then that means the markup is really soon. So now let's look at this in terms of what we're where we're at right now. Okay. So let's see, what was that last bar? That was around the September 16th. All right, so September 16th was there, here, okay? Now, structurally, it's already strong. Finding round structure at the flat support, that's great. Our watch lines are also broken with, if we were, there's my line pin. If we were drawing parabolics at these, structures here we got three and they point up a flow of here they actually testify to the third point which is right here weakness so we actually have one two three four points before the health comes in so a sword cut is about right here so if i was looking for another area of buying i don't necessarily have to come all the way down here but at the last health break so if the professionals are already in this if i'm closer to these prices i want to be bullish if I spike down to here, that's fine. If I come down here, that's fine. I'm still going to be bullish. I'm bullish because the professionals are bullish. Now, I could use this to my advantage to, to say, hey, I can be bullish again up here. And I'm going to drop for you. And we're going to finish up. I can be bullish up there or bearish up there. But up there is where I'm primarily going to be looking for price to make a decision. Above here, building. And we can talk about going higher, do the DP reject projection, which is going to be the double the distance between here and here. It's going to be somewhere about here. And I'm just going to give you that right now. I'm eyeballing it, but my eyes are pretty good. Closer to that price, that would be a DP projection. Come okay. at one six area. Okay, I might want to do that. However, if I'm looking at the situation. I still see all the, there's still a lot of supply. I don't have a strong no demand situation and I don't even have a strong pullback to the sword cut. So as I saw in the image, there's still room for price to possibly come down further, but I'm not going to be bearish at all. I don't want to be, and I don't want to short something like this because that can really get me in trouble. If the markets take a downturn, 
some of these altcoins that are still in good position, sorry, sword cut, I'm going to give you the sword cut price, SC, at 13 cents, 13.26 to 12.45. So you, I, if I was you, I'd put this in your trade note, notebook, put an alert, maybe at the sword cut. So let's put an alert. Here, I'm going to click the line, double click it. My settings will come up. I'm going to click on, actually, this little tablet, this bar is what I'm after. And I'm going to click the alarm clock button. Hey, you cannot put alarms on, alerts on blocks. Sorry. I'm just going to take a little flat line and then I'm going to put the alarm on. I'll stretch this out a little bit. So now I put my alarm. This crypto has lots of accumulation. Look for no demand in volume next or more increased volume again. So those two scenarios, and now I have an alarm set. If price hits there, I'm gonna get a notification and I'll be thinking, hey, I need to come back to this one. Uh, I'm gonna draw this parabolic a little bit more professionally so you guys have it. Do I have any other questions about this crypto at this time so far? So you said when it comes down to that alert, mm -hmm. you're gonna look yep. at it again? You're not necessarily gonna buy? Yeah, I'm probably gonna buy, but if I was really bullish or had a lot of reasons to do it, buy, I would buy, but I also wanna check the market as a whole. So I don't, but if I'm going to get this anyway, then I'm automatically going to have low buy orders at that price. Otherwise I'll have low orders at this other price down here, which I'm about to clone there. Okay. I better get you that price too. Okay. The price for this one is 0.10 to 0.09. Now price doesn't need to come all the way this low again, because there's already been lots of accumulation. In fact, it doesn't even need to really come back because there was so much accumulation, but Generally, it's really good when we have a no demand situation. If I'm in this crypto, do I want to short it today or uh, do I want to short it at all? No, I don't. If I'm in this crypto, do I want to take profit right now? What do you guys think? Yes. If it's going to come back down. Is it going to come back on, down right now? Is there really strong evidence? At the moment with the map we drew, we don't have that. We don't have any strong real reason to sell or exit. A problem people have in the market, they say, is they take profits too soon and they uh, get out too early. If I'm looking at this on a smaller time frame, we are in an uptrend. We hunt a down move in an uptrend. Here's your last down move. So what is this area? It's healthy. What might be a good target? The flats were hit three times. One, two, three. Wick, wick, core, core. Yeah. So we might actually still be looking if the professionals are bullish, they haven't really got out. We should be bullish. We, I showed you guys how the professionals are. Right now we can see what they're doing. Even though to the average eye, it only looks like we're going here and here. Don't be surprised when this crypto hits some really high prices in the future. So we don't want to really take profits on this one. We definitely don't want to short it. If anything, we just entered another period of health. The current price potential just up until the resistance is still 32%. So if I'm holding this, I want to hold out for another 32%, at least, at least. After that, there may be some weaknesses that happen up here. Then we'll talk about it. If I'm in this, I definitely will want to hold on. Okay, I definitely want to hold on to my seats. It may experience bullishness, but if there is, is weakness, then we'll look for support at these two areas. At the moment, I'm not counting on that. We're not expecting it, but it's possible if the markets take a downturn, I'm still wanting this crypto at these two prices. All right, any questions? And... Best Buy says you're looking at the volume of the MEX exchange. Do we need to look at the volume of all exchanges? If you look at, that's a great question. Do we need to look at the volume of all exchanges? Uh, the answer to that is no, not necessarily. If it's a crypto, you're acting, there's only one of me. So I'm doing this chart right now live. But if you guys are really considering buying this and you're like, man, that analysis seems good. Do I see that same analysis on another chart or another exchange? That's something you got to do. Pull up your pull up a chart, pull up multiple charts. See if you can see the same data. It's going to tell a stronger story. If you see weaknesses on all the charts, it's painted a picture. There are variances with exchanges. So it's good habit not to just use one chart to make your decision. OK, sometimes you need a blank chart and just refresh your mind. Draw it. So, yeah, use multiple volume exchanges. But there's only one of me, so we won't do that today. But as it is in the volume, I see if you guys see the same story, it's telling signs of Oh, so this is a crypto that I would want to uh, definitely hold on to. And then if I don't, if I'm not buying it now, I want to buy it up here. Okay. 
this may not be the best place to buy but it's a good it's it's a it's a recent health okay this may not be the season to see a lot of cryptos go up but the altcoins looked really when we last looked at them on the total three okay all right any other questions any questions today about all the things we learned from today if you guys are uh, haven't seen me in a while we're what we're reading the word of god before uh, our meetings this time so read it read it name eastern center time Anybody have any other questions for me as we before we conclude our meeting today, and then I'll, I'll end the Zoom recording. If you guys are watching live on YouTube, because we broadcast today on Patreon, I can't see your questions, but I will be able to see those questions maybe later on in the comment section. Okay. Anyone else live here? Father, we thank you so much for this, uh, this session. I pray that you would help us to always understand more and more things that we're looking at. Be with us. Be loving to us. Be gracious to us, especially. Lord, I pray that we would be accurate reflections of you more and more every day. Let a fatherly love come over us. Let a brotherly love share, be shared between us in the communities with our neighbors here on earth. Let us have more and more of a heart for souls. Let us make heaven. Let our neighbors make heaven. Let our families make heaven. Forgive us our many sins. Help us to always be found in prayer. Let us be found in your presence. Let us be found worshiping. Let us be found with you. You're the best thing that happened, ever happened to us. There's no one like you. If you take away all of our everything, what little wealth we have or a lot of wealth we have, we will just say, as Job did, naked I came, naked I shall go. May the name of the Lord be praised. And so you may you be praised. We thank you for all the blessings. And as I've said before, if you never did any other thing for us, if you never did anything else for us, you don't need to. You've already done so much just at the cross. Thank you for giving us life all the way up to this day. If today's our last day, then praise God. But you've been so faithful with us. You don't need to make our lives even better. It's enough. If all you gave us was evil the rest of our days, we would remember all the good you gave us. We'd remember all the good times. And for that, we didn't even deserve that. And yet you gave it to us. If you take everything from us, Lord, you are wonderful and praised. I'm going to worship you no matter what. And in my life, you did take everything from me. And it was my own fault. But you took everything. And I still loved you. So I'm going to love you still the rest of my life. I pray that we love you. Thank you, Lord, for being good. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys are watching, remember, you guys can always find us on our, our website. I sure do love you. Thank you for supporting us. For those of you who want to give a tithe and offering to Word Room Ministry, our links are always in the description of every one of our YouTube videos. Just check any other other videos for a way to give. When you always give so on to the Lord, and may the Lord bless you, take care of you, bless your finances. Thank you for supporting our family. Thank you for supporting me. You make it so I don't have to withdraw my own cryptos but I'm able actually to trade myself so I really appreciate it I don't have to just live off that I do this full time for charts if you guys are dive tier members and you have requests remember to put them in the shoot them to me in the patreon app and we'll get them if I miss them just shoot me hey you forgot this chart and I'll, I'll look at them or hey can you look at that chart again and I'll see it if you don't see it put it in the chat box in the search bar on our website right there and you're gonna see those come up here in the search bar. Remember to type in lessons to pull up our lessons page right in our search bar there and you're going to be able to find all lessons one through one through 12 and the last two 13 and 14 or just scroll down and they're going to be uploaded on our main page there too as well. Otherwise just scroll and you'll see them. Get started learning charts. It's going to help you become less emotional, more unbiased and help you see charts in another way. Some of you guys are watch so many prophetic things but you don't know how to combine that with your trading i heard dinar was going to go up but it's been 15 years i heard she was going to go up but it's been four years i don't even know i don't and, and some of you guys say these things prophet robin said this he said hey i don't all know no timing i just know what the lord showed me if you guys want timing go to jay song and we, we were glad to uh, get invited to his channel just the other day but what i want to say is you can use data to help you narrow down timelines you can use data to help you understand what you're going through because a lot of times prophetic stuff is is a long time it's a long time in coming it could be longer still some of the bigger well transfer things it's, it's a long journey 
but at least we're going to see a lot of it in the charts. And Prophet Robin told me years ago, I wouldn't miss it. I don't think I'm going to miss it. I pray I don't, but I think we're going to see a lot of it in the data. Tomorrow, I'm going to release a prophetic word that the Lord showed me about banks. Stay tuned tomorrow during, during Word Room. It may be in the middle of Word Room or at the end of Word Room. I'm going to release that prophetic word, Lord willing. So I can't really promise, but I'm going to do my best. He spoke to me yesterday about some of the things that are happening with the banks. And I'm going to be sharing that really soon.